It's not easy. The weather has been playing games, really making it harder for us to do our traditional hunting. It's colder than it's supposed to be or hotter than it should be. So we have to go look further and further away. I got three kids, one that's four, one that's two, one that's seven months. The two boys love to eat. We usually try to provide it through the land, like caribou, fish, all that, rabbit. I feel pressure to go out and get something because you're not always going to find something. You're not always going to run into something. Our fun time is like when April comes when all the geese coming back, that we call that minuscamin, like the blooming season. I think the scientists, they call it the solar season. When we get summer, we go out to the bay and fish all summer. When the fall comes around, we have um, migiska, we call it, it's like the freeze up season. We start hunting moose there. We go way up the river. And then uh, when winter comes around, which is now, December, a lot of people go out during the holidays and um, hunt for caribou. You can get nasty cold. If you don't know the area, there's a good chance you will not make it. I hunt for my parents and also for my sister and I, she has uh, four kids, so there's five of them and myself, so we eat a lot of uh, caribou. The change in the climate is messing up our river. It froze and then it got warm again. And then it pushed the more ice, so it all bunched up and it made it hard for us to get across the river to our usual hunting spots. There's a lot more risks where they're traveling on the, the river. And it's scary when you're driving on the river, but you take that risk because you want to feed your family. The majority of our people live off the land. It's just like a, a cycle. When you're growing up, you have these people uh, feeding you as a child, and it's just like you're giving back to them when they become elderly. And hopefully when I'm uh, old, <laughs> I have somebody giving me some food too. <laughs> If we had to buy everything through uh, the mighty dollar, I guess I would call it, it would be very hard for most families to live on a good diet because it would be just too expensive. 
I don't think we could make it up here without hunting and fishing. Prices are at the store way too high. It's the shipping costs and like the freight to get it in. It's like six dollars for a can of pop sometimes. Seven bucks for a loaf of bread. You know, like, it, it does get expensive. Vegetables, they don't last too long. Every time we get them, they're either rotten or just about to be. One whole caribou can last us maybe two months, three months at the most. Okay, that's a good spot. But if, the, if that's all we have, because the weather has, hasn't been good to us, then it might last us only a month, month and a half. Years ago, uh, while well, I was in Toronto, I think it was like 2008, I started studying climate change and uh, be became very interested and I started to see the future, I guess, that, that the impacts that it will have on the future generations. So one of the things that uh, I really uh, worked on is to have a community-based monitoring system. The biggest impact that uh, I've seen out in the land is the, the melting permafrost. The rate that uh, it is melting, it, it is quite alarming. And um, that's why I'm here. I'm really, I really want my people to have a good future. It is our right to keep on uh, living the way we used to, and also the right to adapt for a better future. My biggest fear of climate change, losing everything, losing our tradition over the weathers. If we lose what we have now, what will we have to show our children in the future? How are they going to eat? They can't just live off the store all the time. I am worried. I'm worried for my grandchildren. I'm going to be worried that they won't have the freedom to go out and provide for their own families, that does worry me. That's our culture, that's a part of us. I'm <laughs> going